in this lesson we'll try to see how to compute the resultant of a system of coplanar concurrent forces using the method of components okay to begin with this let us say we have our x and y axis as shown here let us say this is x axis and let us say this is y axis with positive direction shown here this is the positive direction of x axis this is the positive direction of y axis further let us say we have some number of forces let us try to draw three forces let us say this is one force okay um, let us try to show its head here let us name it F1 we have let us say another force okay with the head pointed this way we have a third force let us say something like this okay with head over here let us also consider a fourth force in, in general we can have n number of forces and the method is the same you have force F4 you can see that this F1 is lying in the first quadrant F2 is lying in the second quadrant F3 is lying in the third F4 is lying in the fourth quadrant let us also try to indicate the angles let us say this angle is theta 1 this angle is theta 2 this angle is theta 3 you can see that I am showing all the angles with respect to x axis theta 4 the idea is that the x component of the resultant of all these forces let me first write what is what is the resultant here resultant will write r bar is f1 bar plus f2 bar plus f3 bar plus f4 bar and this addition is vectorial addition and we need to add according to parallelogram law the idea behind this method of components is that the x component of magnitude of x component of the resultant is sum of the components of individual forces so we have this for x component so x component of the resultant shown here is the sum of x components of f1 f2 f3 and f4 we need to remember that when we try to compute these f1x f2x f3x and f4x we also need to take the sign of the component also into consideration similarly the y component ry is sum of y components of all forces f1y plus f2y plus f3y plus f4y again when we are trying to use these f1y f2y and so on we need to take the signs of these also into consideration that is in this quadrant you have x component positive y component positive in this quadrant you have x component negative y component positive similarly in this quadrant you have x component negative y component also negative in this quadrant you have x quadrant positive x component positive and y component negative so appropriately you will find the signs of these components and you sum them up once you sum them up the magnitude of uh, the resultant is given by the rule formula rx square plus ry square and the angle 
which uh, this resultant makes with x-axis you can indicate as tan inverse uh, absolute value of ry divided by absolute value of rx and you can sh uh, you can find out the quadrant in which this r bar lies depending upon the signs of rx and ry if rx is greater than 0 ry is greater than 0 the resultant will lie in the first quadrant if rx is less than 0 ry is greater than 0 it will lie in the second quadrant then if rx and ry both are less than 0 it lies in third quadrant and if rx is positive and ry is negative it will lie in fourth quadrant we'll try to see an example of this uh, in a subsequent lesson